Welcome everyone to I Didn't Know AWS Network Firewall Could Do That. Uh, I'm happy to see so many of you here. Uh, we're going to blast through this, and I really mean blast through this, uh, because we're going to hit three areas about what Network Firewall can do, and that is going to be uh, what we do with Network Firewall when we deploy, when we defend, and when we detect or discover things that are going on after Network Firewall is out there and running. Uh, and so we're going to jump back and forth, talking about things that you probably already know very briefly, and then we're going to touch on things that maybe you didn't know. And I'm going to give you a whole bunch of resources. There's going to be QR codes, so have your phones ready to grab those, those resources, because we're not going super deep. I'm just introducing you to all these topics that Network Firewall can do that you probably didn't know it was able to do. So let's, uh, let's start out uh, talking about the deployment models you know. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of deployment models for AWS Network Firewall to fit different use cases, different scenarios, right? So you have a distributed deployment model. There's a blog post on it. It covers it in great detail. And in this situation, you'll have your firewall endpoints in each VPC, and you get one endpoint per network firewall that's in a VPC. So you're going to distribute that across your different VPCs where you want to do your filtering. You probably know that already. It's been that way for a while. There's also a centralized deployment model. Okay, this centralized deployment model, again, it's in the same blog, but in this situation, we're integrating now Transit Gateway, and to be able to filter between the VPCs, we'll send our traffic from the VPC over to Transit Gateway through an inspection VPC where we've got that one endpoint per network firewall in a VPC, and then we'll send it back to Transit Gateway and then to either another VPC, or we can route it out, our internet gateway to the internet, back and forth, but we have some routing involved there, right? Okay, then there's the combined deployment model. Again, something that's been around for a while, but in this case, it's the same as that centralized with the transit gateway and the firewall endpoint over there, but in this situation, we have an egress over here for internet connectivity, and we want a different firewall endpoint in that VPC. Different firewall endpoint, different firewall, and it would filter traffic there. It'd have policies. If you wanted the policies to be shared, you could have the, the stateful, the rule groups that can be, uh, they're modular, they can be applied in other places. But again, two different firewall endpoints, two different VPCs. Okay. So those are the models that, that you know. Uh, this is something that you may not know, but this launched yesterday, and it's native integration with AWS Transit Gateway. And this is really cool because it's an easy button. And what this does is, rather than having to prepare your Transit Gateway configuration and then configure your route tables and then deploy your firewall and then update your routing tables and tie all of that together, as you deploy your firewall, you get an option. Do you want to attach this to a VPC or to Transit Gateway? You select Transit Gateway, you get your drop downs, you pick your gateway, it does all your routing stuff for you. Right? So super cool, super fast integration, making it easy to do more complex things. This is available right now in five regions, and soon it'll be deploying uh, in others. So that was yesterday. That's really cool. Now, this is something that's also been around for a while. And just to touch on it real quick, um, it's network firewall with VPC routing enhancements. So here's what happens, right? So we're in this VPC. we got a firewall endpoint. And to go between different subnets, you do local routing. So you couldn't pass traffic through the firewall endpoint if you were going between like the app subnet and the database subnet. It didn't work like that before, right? Because it just routes locally. It doesn't have to pass through a firewall. With this uh, routing enhancement, VPC routing enhancement, it now lets you bypass that default routing and send traffic through the firewall when you're going between those different subnets. Okay. That's been around for a while. It's also in that blog post there. Um, but those are really deployment models that you already know or that you've already been able to see. Here's one that's new that you probably didn't know about, and it is multiple VPC endpoints. So this lets you take uh, a single firewall and have multiple endpoints within 
the VPCs that you want inspection to be in, the ones that you want to protect. So remember, it used to be one firewall endpoint per VPC, right, per firewall. Uh, now you can have multiple, and it can be uh, between accounts as well, right? So you can be like the firewall owner, and you can get the billing for that. And then in another one of your accounts, in a VPC you want to protect there, you can deploy a firewall endpoint and, and take care of it there, right? So that's a really cool uh, brand new feature, and this is like a couple weeks ago that this was, was released. Okay, so that's a firewall uh, feature that you, you probably didn't know. Um, and then, of course, auto scaling up to 100 gigabit per second per uh, AZ as well. So cost savings because of the consolidated billing and not having to have different firewalls attached to different VPCs. So cool stuff. Okay, I said we were going to move fast through this, right? So lots of features to cover. Okay, so those are deployment models, right? And I gave you the blog post links to go get all the detailed info on how to deploy that. But now that we're deployed, let's say we're deployed now, right? In one of those models, let's talk about the, uh, the next step, defending, right? So let's talk about features that you probably knew network firewall could do. And these are things that you just look at it and you're like, it's a firewall, of course it should do stateful traffic inspection, right? Of course it should be able to filter traffic in and out of my NAT gateways and do IP-based filtering and, and basic protocol filtering. Yes, it does. It does all that basic stuff, but network firewall is not basic. It's not a basic firewall. It's got a lot of other features, maybe features you don't know about. So let's talk about them, okay? So uh, some advanced capabilities. So there's application layer intelligence. Did you know that you can do uh, filtering on layer seven metadata, right? You can write that right into your rules. There's capability there. TLS inspection, uh, so that deep packet inspection stuff. Uh, it's got uh, intrusion detection and prevention. Uh, it leverages uh, Suricata, uh, that, that open source uh, engine, and uh, can detect and prevent uh, network-based attacks. So a lot of advanced capabilities there. There are things called AWS Managed Rule Groups, or AMRs. If you don't want to build the custom rules yourself, which you can do, you can simply use AWS Managed Rule Groups, enable those rule groups. These are predefined. They're updated by AWS when they need to be. And you can set those rule actions to alert you if you want to put it in like a monitor mode for a while. And you can also combine it with the custom rule groups that you create, right? Now, there's two types. There's the domain and IP managed rule groups and the threat signature managed rule groups. And those threat signature managed rule groups basically make it an IPS, right? So kind of cool. All right, in addition to that, let's talk about malicious domains because we're, we're concerned about that. We want to defend against them. Well, if we're going to do that, then we have to curate a list of all of those domains. And there's different ways that we can get those lists, but then we got to look through them and figure out which ones we're going to filter based on. Uh, sometimes when we start building those rules, it's complex, and you know we end up with some gaps sometimes. Well, not long ago, we released automated domain lists, this automated domain list feature. So here's what you do. You turn it on. It sits and does analysis for a while, and then it creates a list of all those domains. And then you get to go back and review the list of those domains that it's built for you, and right from there, you can tell it to go ahead and create rules for you to block those domains, right? So another feature that maybe you didn't know you could do that, but making things easier for you to get to that data, figure out what you want to defend against, and then implement some rules. Okay, really cool stuff, but we're not done yet. Geographic threats, right? You want to filter traffic to and from certain geographic locations? Not a problem. We've released that. There's the blog post for that one up there. But it's real simple. You go into your rules as you're creating a rule, and you say, I want to do geographic filtering. And you pick the different geos. And it just uses a little digit code to identify the geographic location. Right? So it's almost like writing like a regular network access control list, but you're doing it based on geographic locations to and from. And then you can either deny or allow. Right? So real easy to do. Easy to set up, very powerful capability. OK, TLS encryption, right? So to be able to really get in and inspect the contents of a packet, 
It's not so easy to do when that packet's encrypted, right? So AWS Network Firewall now can simplify things, the, some of that management complexity that you have. Uh, it can help you meet compliance and then improve the visibility into the, that encrypted traffic by doing either egress TLS inspection, right? And so this is a very detailed looking uh, diagram. There's kind of a lot that goes behind it, but basically you provision your certificates, you set up your TLS uh, configuration, and you create your firewall policy. You attach the TLS configuration to your firewall as, you're, as you build it out, uh, and then a certificate is made available to Network Firewall, uh, and then that firewall is now able to uh, establish those connections on both ends, right, because it's got the certificate and it's in the middle, and it decrypts, inspects the packet, re-encrypts it, and sends it on its way, okay? And this is supported for uh, egress. The two QR codes, one of them is a video demo uh, that I did, and the other one is a, a blog post that gives all the details. This is for egress. And on the next page, I'll pause just for a second and talk through that because the next page is your ingress TLS inspection. Okay, so a whole bunch of stuff going on here, right? There's a lot. And I know we're flying through it. We're about halfway there. Is that all right? Okay. All right, so ingress and egress TLS inspection. Now, this is really cool. I'm so excited to be able to talk about this because this launched in the keynote today. Uh, active threats. What do we do about active threats? Threats that are we're happening right now. Well, you think about the challenges that we have, right? The threat landscape's evolving. We try to manage this with multiple tools and different threat feeds, and maybe we have third-party solutions, and we're mixing all this, and then we have a delayed response to when a threat is active. Well, today we just launched active threat defense, right? Managed rules for network firewall. So before I showed you the AMRs and there were two types, this is a third type, brand new. And when you enable this type, what happens is we take threat intelligence data from the AWS infrastructure, right, through something called MADPOT that we've been using for a while, and we identify threats that are active, we create rules automatically and can apply those for you while the threat's active. Threat's gone, rules can go away. Right? New threat, new rule. Right? Really cool stuff. Real easy to enable as well. If you want to learn more about this, there's a, a detailed session on it. Uh, and it's uh, tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. And uh, I recommend you check that out. It's really cool. All right. So um, now we've got policy applied, and we've got different ways to apply policy. Uh, what do we do with our flows? Right. Well, we have a flow management feature, uh, some flow capabilities. We can capture flows uh, for visibility and troubleshooting. There's a flow flush feature where you can look at certain flows and you can flush them out. Uh, and then we have flow filters that are going to let you match uh, on five tuple criteria if you're looking for specific flows. Right? So again, giving you that deeper capability to get in there and, and see the things that are happening with your firewall. Whew. That's a lot. Okay, well, we're not done yet. There's still a couple more things. Um, and we're kind of we're trailing out to the end, right, because I've gone through so much of this. Um, now that, that we are defending our traffic or defending our infrastructure, um, monitoring is like the next thing that we talk about, right? So we've deployed, we're defending, uh, and now we want to monitor. So let's, let's talk about that and uh, how we discover what's happening. So I know you probably all know this already. Uh, logging and monitoring features that you probably know would include something like, uh, what do you think? Uh, uh, CloudWatch, yeah, <laughs> right? You just send everything to CloudWatch and then what do you do? You filter through it, right? Or get some tool that's gonna help you look through it, right? You write filters for that. Uh, send the traffic over to S3, right? Log it all to S3. Uh, Kinesis, right? Or a partner solution, right? You send, send your log data there, right? And then you still have to be able to visualize it somehow uh, and kind of identify from there 
what's going on? Well, here's another one of those features. This is the logging and monitoring feature that maybe you didn't know Network Firewall could do. And the reason I say maybe you didn't know that Network Firewall could do this is because uh, this launched like a week ago, um, like on the 6th or something like that, so not, not very long ago. But uh, AWS Network Firewall now has native dashboard capability uh, right, in, right in the AWS console. And so um, in here you can see you know, traffic summary, right? So yeah, we can write filters and we can go pull that data and then we can identify that, oh, we've seen 6,461 connections and we've rejected 1,900 and we've dropped 1,300. Or we can have the native dashboard just tell us that so we know quickly what's going on, right? Uh, and then what about top talkers, right? So we have top talkers. That's useful information, right? All right there in my dashboard. Uh, there's some more uh, stuff to look at here in that dashboard. So top rejected traffic, and we get details on that. Top dropped traffic, uh, and then uh, you can even see down here, I don't think I highlighted it, but top long-lived TCP flows, uh, top TCP flows, SYN without SYNAC, right? And you get addresses, you see the sessions, right? And then, of course, you can go in and you can start filtering on those sessions and, and figure out what's going on. And do you need to write rules for this, right? Is this okay? Is it not okay? Uh, and then uh, for TLS, right? So we always talk about uh, the SNI, and we know that's uh, something that we want to keep an eye on, SNI uh, spoofing, things like that. So in here, we can actually look and see the top alerted TLS SNI, and it gives us a list of those and the hit count, and we can see the top dropped or rejected TLS SNIs, and we get a count for those. Okay? And then from there, we can just dig into it and decide, do we need rules for this? Do we not need rules for this? Is this traffic I expect to see? Is this traffic I don't expect to see? So that brings us to uh, this slide where I say uh, a whole bunch of the stuff that I just talked about, like a lot of it, uh, is covered in these three sessions. These have not happened yet. Even though we've already had sessions, we have repeats of some of the sessions. Uh, the scaling threat prevention with AWS and Suricata, um, that's going to go into the rules, right, and your threat prevention, and that's today. Uh, later on at 4.30, uh, and that is a builder session. And so if you can make it to that builder session, you can actually sit down at a table. There will be 10 of you and a, a presenter at that table, and you'll get to actually walk through that stuff uh, and learn all that. The other one is uh, thinking beyond traditional firewall architectures. This is a really interesting one. That is a breakout session, um, and that's tomorrow at, at 8.30. That's actually at the same time as the session that's going to go into more detail on uh, the active threat defense, uh, and some of those other features, the brand new features that we talked about. And then finally, uh, if you want to just sit for like 90 minutes, and I think it's 90 minutes, and just do the work in a workshop, the uh, securing AWS egress controls to defend against zero day and ransomware attack is, uh, or ransomware, is uh, a workshop that you can jump into uh, tomorrow afternoon. I think that's tomorrow afternoon, right? Yeah, Wednesday? Yeah. Okay. So with that, uh, I want to say thanks for joining me for this session. Uh, I'm down to one minute left, so whew, we made it through all of those really cool features of Network Firewall. Uh, thanks, and uh, take some time if you don't mind. Fill out the session survey. We really appreciate it. And if you have any questions that I can answer, I'll be over here for just a couple minutes to uh, fill those for you. Thank you.